From roads to rails to land, economic development projects are happening all over the state of New Hampshire. Many of these transportation and infrastructure upgrades are vital to a healthier economic future for the Granite State. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers at the New Hampshire Institute of Politics at St. Anselm College. William Craig, Director of Economic Development in Manchester, New Hampshire, is my guest. Will, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the role that the city of Manchester has when it comes to the economic development of New Hampshire. So Manchester is really the hub of development and growth for the state of New Hampshire. We have the largest health care providers, insurers, law firms, you name it, most of them, banks including, are based in Manchester. Beyond that, we have you know the Manchester-Boston Regional Airport, which is incredibly important to the mm -hmm. state's economy as a whole. And what I think draws all these people and all these employers to Manchester you know, is our great quality of life, including recreation and cultural centers like the Verizon Arena, the Delta Dental Baseball Stadium, the Courier Gallery of Art, and the Palace Theater. So Manchester is really a great place whether you want to work, live, or do anything. Manchester is definitely a thriving city. Now let's talk about some new programs that are important to the economic development of this city and of course uh, your office. So tell us about these new programs. Sure, there are two that come to mind. The first is it's a state statute. It doesn't have an exciting name but the statute is 79E and the state law allows municipalities to adopt tax credit programs and what the municipality has to do is recognize a downtown area by zoning and in that area businesses or someone who applies to rehab a building that has fallen in disrepair, mm -hmm. normally a, a formerly important building. In Manchester we have, you know, streets lined with brick buildings that were important a hundred years ago and some of them need some love and attention. So mm -hmm. what this allows a developer to do is fix the building and pay the pre-rehabilitation property tax value on that for five years. For developers it's a good tool and we hope will encourage some redevelopments. The second is a plan the mayor just announced in his budget proposal, which he's calling the Small Business Assistance Program. Okay. And it brings back a couple programs that the city used to have. It's federally funded and it allows small business people to apply for matching grants for facade improvement, so fixing the exteriors of their businesses, which is good for downtown beautification, mm -hmm. or for code compliance work, which allows businesses or people who own businesses, I mean buildings that are, you know, need some upkeep allows them to pay for fire repairs or building department repairs with federal funds. All right, so let's talk about the rail service. What's happening in regards to expanding passenger rail service in New Hampshire? Sure, that's been in the news a lot recently. Mm -hmm. uh, just completed the State Department of Transportation's Capital Corridor Study, just released, which looks at expanding rail from Boston to Nashua and Manchester. It's been talked about for 30 or 40 years, mm -hmm. and this study is sort of the first time that there's some data and findings that suggest that while this project would be very expensive, it would be very beneficial uh, to commuters and from my point of view largely important to development creating hundreds of jobs during the construction and likely over 10 years or so you know, thousands of jobs along the rail line but also in Manchester and particularly important would be the station the downtown station would like be, likely be in downtown Manchester and the data suggests that where you have rail you have great economic mm -hmm. development so it's a great opportunity for the city, although still a lot of work to be done. I will look forward to see that as it continues to be planned out. So tell us about some of the use of the new technology that citizens are able to sort of connect with local government a little bit more easily. Sure, so connect is the operative word. Um, when I started this job, the mayor told me who he wanted an app for the city. And he's not a, he has, he'll say he's not a big technology guy, but he knows it's important to a lot yes. of people. So we have an app called Manchester Connect. What it does, the primary fixture of it is it's called C-Click Fix. So citizens using their smartphone can take a picture of anything they see in the city, garbage not picked up, graffiti, send it in with a report, and it's automatically directed to the department that will be charged with correcting it. And then you get a report from the department saying, got your message, we fixed this. Well, it's a great opportunity to keep folks connected. Yeah, we hope so. And it's for a new generation of people who might not normally have interaction with City Hall other than to pay a parking ticket or taxes. Okay, so let's say your first year on the job, what would you say is your biggest goal and your top priority moving forward? Sure, so I've been excited just getting in this job and getting an opportunity to reopen this office which was closed for almost a year. So a lot of it is just letting people know that we're back, we exist, and we're here to help businesses who are either in the city or who want to come to the city. We're here to tell them why they should be in Manchester and why I believe it's a great place to live, work, and do business. Well, congratulations and best of luck to you, Will. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.